up, Brian Fasman? What's up, everybody? Here we are, Mystery Green Hour, Episode 8, Mr. Skag. And Mr. Blue at you again. Your lovely hosts. Uh, well, this week, um, I don't know if you've been seeing on your Facebook, I think on mine it was trending for a while, this guy, Julian Blanc. Oh, is that the uh, fucking douchebag pickup artist? <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah, you were telling me, Mr. Blue was mentioning this dude the other day. He's that, um, you could like Google his name and see all kinds of shit about him. He's like this pickup artist in, and he goes to like Japan and all, all over the place, but he's got this big controversy because what, what did he do again? He, he's like a very like forceful, like douchey pickup yeah, artist. Yeah, he has all these like tactics and these physical things you can do, these other things that supposedly attract women to you, even subconsciously. Right, but uh, he does like, like grabbing their throat. Like, yeah. Um, I think he was in Japan, and he grabbed, he says, all, all the Japanese girls love it. Say Pikachu, and grab their head and throw it on your cock. <laughs> and it was, it was funny watching him. I was like, I, I can't believe like this guy actually exists. Yeah, is people, he even real? And right? He's having seminars, and people actually show up and pay him a lot of money to get tips from this guy. Right? Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. I was reading an it's article. Unbelievable. I was reading an article about, about him, and he, he he glorifies like you know forcing himself on women and and all and all of this shit. And a lot of people have come out to defend him. You know these these guys who have claimed that he's like you know really impacted their life and helped them get self esteem. But it seems like he's doing it in such a asshole way yeah. where it's like you know on what planet is that an okay pick I, I don't think it's okay i don't think going to a chick at a bar and choking her yeah even I, if you're playing around yeah i don't i definitely okay, really i don't think i would ever in a million years think to use that approach how how <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense yeah i can't imagine, how would a can you imagine going to a, a, a chick doesn't know you doesn't right even though i yeah, wouldn't even just, do that chick i know yeah, let alone someone you just someone just, that you met. just met. Just some see, stranger yeah, guy grabs you from across throat? the bar. What the fuck? How are you going to react? You're going to react by trying to punch him or scream, yeah, yell, it sounds like get someone's attention get, to get, get help? Yeah, it sounds like a good way to get arrested, for God's sakes. So bizarre, man. But yeah, and like there's this culture of, of certain pickup artists, like, and by the, the whole idea of it, it doesn't even make any sense, but it's been going on for a while now. The whole idea of like pickup artists as like a profession, as guys who do it for a living, have TV shows and seminars and. All about yeah. helping people pick up women. Like, it's like this massive scientific fucking theory. Yeah, they act like they've come up with this formula. I'm not saying it doesn't work for these guys. And there may be some truth to the stuff that they're teaching and they're preaching, but it just seems, still seems odd to me. I can't really, like, I, I can't fully accept it into yeah, my there's, life. There's gotta be, yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's something to it because it's been around for so long. Like, you remember that, you remember that fucking big, lanky idiot guy with the with the big, stupid hat? On the VH1 show. Yeah, he had a VH1 show. I think it was called The Pickup Artist. Um, yeah, Mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one and only Mystery. Mystery. <laughs> he was like that, and that show was on a long time ago, right? That was oh, yeah. like, that was a, that was an old show. I remember he wore like big stupid ass hats. Yeah, he had a big time. like furry hats. He had long he'd, hair. He'd wear like, yeah, he had long hair. He'd wear like eyeliner. He actually looked like fucking a little bit like Nikki. Yeah, he bit. yeah he looked well, like. Gives me this, this long hair thing. I yeah, know. I feel like he looks like a gayer, like lankier version of Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots. He's got like mm. that same just odd like look, and he would wear like these like fluffy jackets and puffy hats and goggles and like and like shawls. I mean, he would just he was the oddest dude it's you like, could ever imagine. Take someone that you'd see at the Burning Man festival, and then add gothiness to it, and that's exactly what this guy looks like. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, but not not in a in, in and it's not no, it's not in a good way. It doesn't definitely look not. But you know what? This guy claims he gets tons of chicks, which is like, I mean, it's, I, it's amazing because I think dressing this way, he, I guess he just likes the challenge because it's so easy for him. He wants to make it harder for him to get pussy. Yeah. So let me just look like a complete asshole and see if I can actually still get pussy with the, all these tricks that I know. I you know I think yeah. he's making it harder on himself for fun. Yeah, it may be, but when you hear him talk, right, like, he has, like, I mean, he breaks it down into such, like, scientific elements that it's, like, it, you know, it's, it's like he's talking about the theory of, like, relativity or something, but it's picking up women. I mean, he he, he gets so in-depth with... Oh, yeah, he, I with, mean, he's got a formula. Yeah, a serious yeah. formula, and, and he teaches it to all these other people, and then we, so we have, and but he's never done anything to what I've seen, like, anything violent, or he doesn't preach that no, kind of thing. I no. don't even know what he would say about this... Julian Block. I, I don't think he'd be a supporter idiot. of this Julian Block guy. No, I don't think so because that's like taking it to a whole different level. Like it seems yeah. like I don't know anything about the pickup artist like crew or 
you know, click. But it seems like there's like the old school version of it where it's like, you know, it's still maybe a little overboard to me, but they still treat them with like a decent amount of respect. And then there's like that kind of new age, like douchiness where guys think that it's like, let me just teach other guys how to be a complete dick and violate women and that'll work. Yeah, and especially today, how can you even think that would even fly? I have no idea. And women are going up in arms about it. But the feminazis also kind of drive me crazy a little bit because yeah, they piss me off too. How about the that English group of scientists who just landed that like uh that uh that that uh fucking robotic thing <laughs> mm. on, on a comet that's supposed to read and get get information from a comet? Right. That dude was wearing like a bowling uh freaking uh Big Lebowski shirt. Yeah, great very, movie. Like, graphic novel have chicks on it. But, yeah, but in, in the style of a bowling shirt, right? Right. Right. And feminists are up in arms over that. How, how do you take that seriously? Um, I don't know. This I'm guy not... just landed a probe on a comet. Right, and you're going to get on him for and some dumb shit. you're going to get on him for wearing a graphic novel with graphic novel looking chicks on a fucking... It's almost comically cheesy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this is what I mean, where they don't let anything go. You know? No. no. I mean, like... I can understand getting a little upset about the Julian Blanc character. Yeah, but see, that's the problem. Like, if you get mad about little dumb things, then it ruins your credibility when you're actually mad about something you should be mad about. Like, they they have a right to be upset yeah. about a guy like that. Yeah. But because they come out of the woodwork for all these dumb reasons, they like, it's like the boy who cried wolf. It's like, come on, you're getting mad over guys who wear a yeah, t-shirt gonna, with yeah. a hot chick on it. And then, you know, how can you put that guy in the same league with a guy who's choking women in yeah, bars? Dude, this geeky dude who's, who's a rocket scientist, just he fucking he just accomplished this amazing achievement, and you're getting on him about his bowling shirt. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's fucking amazing. People are fucking. I mean, I don't think even a lot of chicks are even supportive of this one though. I, I actually just read an article about a chick who's like, "All right, look, this is getting ridiculous." Yeah. Like, well, that's you, what you got. Like, you really got to learn to pick your battles. Kind yeah. Of, and she's right. Yeah, well, that's what. Yeah, that's it. Has to. It's the only thing that's gonna make a difference is other women coming out and saying like, "Look, we're not all like this, and we, you know what I mean? We don't care for this dumb shit. You know, we're gonna save our time for real issues. You know, um, so I don't know the whole concept of a pickup artist and that entire world is like just foreign to me. To me, it makes like I can never see myself implementing any of those tactics. They're just ridiculous because so- you don't need them. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Mr. maybe Mr. Skag, Mr. Good-looking guy over here, <laughs> yeah. has never had any trouble getting chicks. No. Okay. So maybe, I guess, yeah. Maybe I just can't relate. But I can. I'm trying to put myself in the, in their shoes, and I just don't see how that could ever like unless you completely mastered it. Like, like that guy, mystery. He's like I think he has like degrees in like you know sociology, and like he's like a real like expert in like people's. Physical like he's, gestures. He's yeah. He, he's very interested in human behavior. Right. Yeah. He studies human behavior. Yeah. Yeah. So behavior. yeah. So it's beyond. He just happens to use like scientific elements of human behavior and studying human behavior for the purpose of picking up women. Yeah. But to think he's gonna teach that, like, okay, we're, just to put it in the context, like we'll play this quick clip of him describing some techniques for picking up women. Yeah, this should be kind of funny. And you listen to him, and he and he sounds super scientific through the whole thing. Keep in mind, he's teaching this to a bunch of just. You know, regular guys who have no clue or no background in any of this. Um, So we're just going to play the clip. All right. You ever hear of something called the freeze out? Anyone who understands compliance ladders, anyone who understands keno escalation within comfort properly, will already know what freeze outs are. You see, basically what happens in keno escalation is I'm, you know, the job of Kino is to get her used to my body, get close to her, and also telegraph a little interest at the same time. Many guys do it wrong. They'll start rubbing her shoulder, you know, put her hand, your hand on her shoulder for too long, or... <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, we pause the video because... Well. <laughs> okay, but just to, just, that was, you see how, like, how scientific he, he, he's getting with the, with the whole thing. There's a bunch of words in there I don't even fucking understand. He breaks it down in such a way, and... You, Mr. Our very own Mr. Blue, unintentionally practiced this yeah. pickup artist technique on on the, our Leah, Leah interview a couple weeks I, ago. When she was sitting next to me, we're like passing the microphone back and forth. Mm-hmm. I started like I, I wanted to like initiate physical contact. Right. He did the exact thing that that 
Mystery just said not to do. He touched her in a very creepy, very. I, I was rubbing her back. <laughs> yeah, I was touching her back. Yeah, and like I, I remember doing the interview, I and think I, you're, I remember looking at. You I was were, looking at you like, what the fuck are you doing? Like you were just rubbing her back like very tenderly, <laughs> but for like way too long, and it was just yeah. super uncomfortable. I, I, left, I think I left my hair, hand there too long. Yeah, exactly. So you already broke one of Mystery's rules. Boom, right there. So you think if I just touched her quick every now and then? That would have been okay. Well, well yeah, okay. I will, we'll play some more of the video, and you can learn something from mystery. Okay, he's gonna he's about to explain to you what you should what, what you should have done. Yeah. Okay. And then after you learn, maybe you can get a pair of goggles, and you'll be on your way. Wrap around her waist, and some girls, some socialized women who have been, uh, you know, who are experienced, have been into public gatherings for quite some time. You know what will happen? They get used to it, and they don't make much of it, and it doesn't mean much either. But for some women, it means a lot. It's creepy, it's weird, it's eerie, and they'll sort of pull off. And once they pull off, you've lost your value. So we've come up with something called the freeze out for keno escalation, for compliance ladders. And here's what happens. Instead of my touching her back. Now, I can't remember if she pulled off or not. Do you? Um, I don't think she did. No. Well, okay, well, she was a hooker, so she's probably pretty, but pretty practiced in guys doing things she doesn't like and pretending that she doesn't care. So I think, <laughs> I think, I think if you were to try that with a normal chick, it that went over, it might not have worked. But I think you could have just pulled out, you know, your dick and smacked her in the knee with it, and she would have been like, "Oh, this is yeah, hilarious. This is normal. This is normal. Yeah, she's she's a professional. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think that that was, that was totally fine. Um, it's just uh, so the way he's describing it in this video is like to 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 touch somebody, but playfully and. But talking about someone you just met, I you know what I mean. Like we can't. I, I, I kind of know what he means though, because I, I I've been on a lot of dates where like for whatever reason we let, we just had no physical chemistry, mm -hmm. and I think right off the bat, like even something simple, just touch her on her shoulder at night, like not in a creepy way, but if you can just break that that ice block of getting initiating the physical contact, it can then create sexual chemistry and physical chemistry. Yeah, but that I didn't exist. Yeah, before. but but you can't just pull it out of nowhere. Like in order to like if there's no sexual chemistry. Like, like the reason why you touch somebody or they touch you is because of their sexual chemistry. Yeah. yeah. So to just go from, you know, hey, what's up? How are you? I'm gonna put my hand on your shoulder. It's just weird. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> that's but creepy. I mean, if, you're, if you're talking for a while and you're trying to get it there, then you want to figure out a way to touch or to kind of get that physical chemistry going. Yeah. Okay. You know? Well, he goes more into about in, yeah, more into it in the video. Play clip from that douche. <laughs> I'll take her hand and say and put it on my uh, on my uh, elbow here on my arm. And I'll let go and say, that's all you get. Here, give me your hand. Very nice. Okay, that's all you get for now. All right, let's just have a conversation. Th really? That is ridiculous. That's all you get? <laughs> How creepy would you be if you walked up to a girl in the bar, you were just started talking, you take her hand, put it on your arm, and then shrug away and say, oh, that's all you get. She'd be like, what the fuck? That's all I get? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that doesn't mean... Yeah, see, like... well, I want your arm? Like, I, I, I need your arm? Yeah, you just so you just grabbed her arm, put it on, on yours, your and yeah. then tugged away. And that's all you get. Teasing. I mean, I get his. I get the idea, but that only. And I guess I have done things like that, like unintentionally. But that's only if there's already a connection. You're already flirting and touching yeah. each other. I then get, maybe you could be playful I like that. Get, I mean, we. I think we understand. We can all understand the initial concept of it's it, it, it's all around the physical connection thing yeah and it's good, be, it's good to be it's good to be playful and fun and whatever but teaser a little bit example, but for this coming from a guy who's a, like a fucking pro that's the creepiest shit i ever heard in my life right so if anybody at that seminar was like okay i'm gonna go try that tonight they go out to a bar these are fucking nerds yeah like, the nerdiest nerds fucking guys nerds, with basically man. zero social graces they go find a hot chick across the bar and then they go just go grab her arm and put it on their elbow and then turn away that's all you get that's all you get it's ridiculous. Even Mr. Skag would have a hard time pulling this one off. Yeah, out of, yeah. First move, like just I don't. Yeah. yeah, like just in the initial conversation. Ah, man, that would be tough. But especially if you're a nerd, or even if you're an average-looking guy like myself. Yeah. Uh, it, it'd be fucking really difficult. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know the sad fact is, good-looking guys do get away with way more shit. Unfortunately, yeah, true. I think good-looking women do too. No, so like, yeah, that, it goes so, both ways. Yeah. Like the better. I mean, you can just like your game doesn't really have to be that amazing if you're good looking it, it's tough I, uh, unfortunately i mean it's tough on the other other guys because you, you need so much more you actually do need a little bit of a game to right because you already got one strike against you right from the get-go yeah. so you you're need competing to with these these good looking 
like fucking model esque people. Right. These people who have always relied on no looks and never really had to work up a game. Yeah. So you have to find a way to get in there and break through that. Yeah. Her that she's not really finding you attractive. But that's to that, that's in some ways yes you start off as at a disadvantage but it's to your advantage because these people have never even had to have a game. So if you have a little bit of a game, you can topple these people sometimes. Right, especially from like the the more you know, like the cooler chick who's not all just so shallow. Right. She doesn't really give a shit if she if you guys go looking. She's looking for way more substance than that. Well, if she's yeah. If she's as shallow as empty as the the shell and empty guy that she's trying to get with, then your game doesn't matter anyway. Right, but at the same time, how many times have you seen really hot chicks with guys that are? not even close to as good looking as there and it's because they're funny and they have a good personality or or whatever so there are a lot of good looking girls out there who really will make personality and humor and you know that way way more way above just your aesthetic appearance you know what i mean and even i our our friend i know i we won't say his name yeah yeah but you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's what we would call um ugly yeah, I, I think would, some make say he's ugly. Yeah, I'm not sure I, if I would go there. But I would. He's he's yeah. He's Mr. Skaggs yeah. would go there. <laughs> he's like he's just like the door. He is fucking. It's unbelievable. And so what? He's dating a suicide girl, right? One of the, you believe, got those super hot yeah. tattooed models. She's really good looking. Oh yes. my god. See, but that just goes that to show. Go, that goes to show you. So for any dude out there, you know, you're kind of worried about your looks. You're not like you know, Mister. You know, super good looking. You know, if you have a you know good personality and, and you're funny i think humor is like one of the biggest things out of like the majority yeah. of girls that i've talked to and i feel the I same so. way about women too like i don't care if you're super hot if you're not funny and i can't like you know joke around with you and you don't have my yeah. level of humor i don't care I, you know? I mean maybe it's just me i i personally haven't met many chicks that i've found very funny unfortunately that's a bummer i've i've met a few that are I would really love hilarious. To do, check the, who I thought was funny. Unfortunately, a lot of the girls I met who are funny end up also being psychotic, uh, and that comes out later. Right. So, bit of a kind of double-edged sword there. You know what? That's a good point because uh, I found Emily kind of funny, and Emily's a psycho. A lot of lo- apparently, a lot of psychos are funny. Yeah. You know. And she actually, you know, I love she. She thought I was really funny too. She laughed at my jokes. I love. There's nothing that turns me on more more than a chick laughing at my jokes. Yeah. Do you think I'm funny? Oh God, that's a big turn on for me. Yeah, having like being on the same page with humor. Like yeah, I'm super yeah. sarcastic, and my my humor could be like very morbid at times. Yeah, yeah. So if I can find a girl, I like that though, yeah. if I find a girl who's like that too, and I have, I, it's like the best. Because then then it's like with the, you're chilling with like a best friend. You crack each yeah, other up yeah. and you laugh, and so it's kind of cool finding girls the best of both worlds. So she's really hot and she's great and she's funny. So you can kind of chill with her as a best friend. Plus. A girlfriend. Yeah. My girlfriend before Emily, Ashley, she never thought anything I said was funny. Ever. We Really? We you? Nothing you said was funny? <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't have had more opposite taste and humor. Ah. In fact, I... I See, I that would be, that'd be a killer for me. I couldn't... Some guys could deal with that. I couldn't. I, could, I, I actually couldn't. I mean, I, I, that, something that really bothered me. I, I, in fact, I sent her this clip, right? Uh, you, you know Ricky Gervais? Yeah, the he comedian. He did The Office. Yeah. Well, I, I forget what show it was he did or what was part but there's a clip of um, David Bowie's on his show right I saw it on YouTube and he starts singing a song about Ricky Gervais and they're like they're hanging out in this I don't know if it's a club or bar or something Bowie happens to be there he goes introduces himself right Mm -hmm. and Bowie's sitting at the piano he's like oh and he acts like he just got inspiration for the song he goes silly little fat man (laughs) singing about about Ricky Gervais right yeah Nobody's bloody laughing. <laughs> the clown that nobody laughs at. It's totally fucking shitting on Ricky Gervais. Wow. And I thought it was hilarious. And I sent her, she she didn't even fucking crack a smile. She just thought it was, she I, just it was didn't get it. She, I know she has some like fatter friends. Oh, that's when she got offended. Was I, was. I was like, even if it, I could have had a, like, I could have a million fat friends. I think but that, I would yeah, still find that funny. That's even worse than that fuck? means she's easily offended, and I hate people oh, that are fucking easily offended. So she has no sense of humor, and she's easily offended. But, but I'll tell you this. Goodbye. I, I saw on her Facebook wall the other day, right? She, she posted a shirt she thought was hilarious. It, it, right, it's a, it's a pea pod, right, with peas? Yeah. And it says, bitch, peas. Womp, womp, womp. And so she's just fucking retarded thing, no, then. Yeah, she's just retarded. She okay. has no sense of humor. There we go. Well, that's what it is. Her so sense she, of humor sucks. It's just, it's just shitty. There we go. Okay, yeah. So that's another... Yeah, if you have... what Their definition of, of humor is just totally not mine that we're not going to not gonna yeah. get it. But it just... It bothered me to the core because I like funny shit. I'm passionate about... Com- I love comedy. You know, I, I have a list of comedians I love and I follow. 
and the fact that she just found nothing that I found funny just bothered the shit out of me. Yeah, there's no way that that can work. Yeah, if I can't laugh <sighs> and crack up with a girl, Fuck. it's just not not gonna happen. Yeah. So to bring it more into a uh, social spectrum, I showed Mr. Blue this article before we were prepping for the show, and I think it was a Vice article. Yeah, it was um, on Vice. And um, I love Vice, by the way. They're a great website. Although I liked them a lot better before they got involved with, uh, they got bought out by like Rupert Murdoch, or at least he bought like a big chunk of it, big, huge like media corporation. So they're not as like raw and as they used to be, but they still have some really good articles and some really good shit. Yeah, I, w- I never saw them before. I guess they got bought out, so I have no idea. Yeah, no, they, yeah, they, they, they've always done really good uh, like documentaries and articles on uh, politics and drugs and crime and all kinds of shit. So we, so you showed me this article earlier about um, this initiative to stop schools like colleges from checking, you know, or, or you know, making people let them know if they have criminal records if they've been arrested, just you know, before you can get into school, get in college. And how it's a huge problem because a lot of people are not getting in. And students are getting denied. Yeah, scu- yeah students are getting denied. Getting denied. Yeah, because they have a criminal record, whether you know however long however long ago it was, and it's an issue because these people are unfortunately you know they they fucked up in their past, they did something wrong, and now you're just marked for life. That's what's that's what's fucked up about it. Is that you can't get past it? Now you're telling these people who I mean, they, maybe they fucked up, right? They want to turn the light down around. They want to get educated, and now you're telling them that they can't even get educated. Right? Yeah, exactly. So on one hand, you're telling people, okay, you messed up. You have to pay your debt to society. Your debt will be paid, and you can move on. But no, it doesn't actually work that way because even after you paid your debt, whether you had to do time or whatever the fuck you had to do, that shit still haunts you. It's just a black mark haunting you. And it's like education is incredibly important. You know, like you know, with an education, you can do so many things. So to deny people that because they fucked up, you know, it's like, well, you know, where where does it end? You know, counterproductive. It's, yeah, it's counterintuitive. Yeah, it just it just really like blasts the whole real rehabilitation thing to shreds because it's not about that. Because if it was, they would encourage people to go out and get jobs. You know, f- you know, felons. Like, look, I get this. Like, I'm going through this right now. Like, I'm a convicted felon. Oh, yeah. That's done. It's a wrap. Like, it, there's nothing you need to change. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's nothing I can do to change like that. That is on my sheet. It will be there for a very long time. Period. Um, and like a serious can felony it ever too. Come off. It can. After like seven years or something like that, you can petition to get it removed. Uh, you know, after spending you know tens of thousands of dollars on a lawyer, they they can get it removed. So they do not make it like an easy. No, a lot of people just yeah. don't have the money or the ability to get that removed. And that's if you didn't catch any other new charges in the meantime. Like you have to be a model citizen for you know the seven to ten years or however long it is, and then get a lawyer to do it for you. But that's what, like fucked up. Like you said that that that's. That's really putting like a mark on you for your entire. That's gonna affect your whole life, and it, yeah, it's, it's kind of telling you like don't even like well, what, no matter what you do to improve your life, you're always gonna have this fucking like I think you kind of said like right a roadblock there. Right. Well, that's so why so many people up. go you can back. You only get so far. Yeah, exactly. That's why people go back to crime because they're like, okay, I can't get a job. I have a the- felony. I can't go to school. So what else am I gonna do to make money? Because you have a fucking low ceiling. Yeah, they yeah achieve. they yeah they bring your ceiling down when you get locked up and when you become a product of the system your ceiling like you said gets gets broken down so low that you feel like okay I'm stuck like if I were to, in following society's rules I can only go so high because they have limited it's, me yeah now I got a felony and no one wants to hire me I can't do I, I can't even achieve the things I want to achieve yeah so what am I gonna do fuck it I'll go back to the streets and sell drugs or I'll go back to this and then that's how that cycle gets even more started of just going back to jail coming out going back to jail coming out because there's no fucking opportunities for when you get out like you were literally marked and so this article was saying how a lot of a lot of people are trying to going after schools right now and trying to get them to stop looking at this and look in a way like i kind of understand in in a, a context obviously you should know if somebody's you know a murderer or a rapist but a lot of the crimes, like, you know, almost like, you know, 80% of a lot of the people locked up in this country right now are for nonviolent crimes. So when they get out, they still get marked with the same felonies. They still have the same record, but, you know, it's nonviolent. So you're going to hold people back who maybe had a drug problem or were down on their luck for a little while and stole some money. I mean, there's so many ways to get arrested and to break laws in this country that anybody can literally get arrested for anything these days and end up getting a mark well, staying you, you on should, your record. You should at least be able to plead your case. Like, the school should have to hear you and, like, check you out. And they see, oh, yeah, you know, here's a guy who did have an issue. It is on record, but he's trying to get his life together. He's clean. 
Well, uh, that's what they claim that they supposedly do. But you know how it is. Like, oh, yeah. As they soon say as, one thing and they do another. Yeah, they say one thing and do... Like, technically, you can still be like a something like a lawyer with a felony. You can, obviously, you can't be like a teacher. You can't be a cop. You can't... Like, just flat out, no. They see that. You're done. But something like a lawyer, yeah, that yes, you can still apply. Yeah, you, know, you could take the test... But come on, no fucking firm is gonna hire no. you. They can claim that they they all say like, okay, yeah, we're gonna check, blah blah blah. But as soon as they see that, you know, it's just like, okay, applications out the window. Goodbye. Because literally, in like, they, you have one guy here. They have the same qualifications, or even one guy is a slightly higher, but one guy's a felon, one guy's not. Especially today, Who do they pick in, in today's climate, which is it's very much an employer's market. You have no chance. No, yeah, because yeah, yeah, you really, yeah, you really don't because so there's many such a for jobs. yeah, there's such an excess of workforce yeah. labor out there that are trying to get jobs that the employers have way more power now than they used to because they can, they can be just as picky as they, they, want. they can be as picky as they want. So why, especially now, like you said, would they hire a felon when especially they don't have now, to? Yeah. When there's Harvard MBAs out there with no job, that's right. They're willing to work for a lot less than they normally would. So you have this this society right now that's making it not only difficult for anybody to get a job but like that's what they never talk about like on news they talk about the unemployment rate how difficult it is for people to get jobs there's no jobs but that's just they're talking about regular people forget about people who are stained with criminal records they're just doubly fucked <laughs> you yeah. know they're not even a consideration like they're just like we're worried about yeah. getting at regular people jobs you people right. well we don't really give a fuck about you the you're the last one on the yeah, list the long and short of it is you, if you have a family or a criminal past High level, low level, you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, unless you get really lucky and fall into a, you know, a job that's okay with it, that understands, um, or you know, something goes on. It's but you know, like you said, your ceiling is much lower. You, yeah. can, you can always get a job in like construction, I mean, but you know, yeah. breaking rocks for the rest of your life. Sure. But you know, there's a. I know a lot of really smart, yeah. really smart guys who have criminal records that are amazing. You know, math wizards and they, right. these guys. You know, they 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 finance guys. But they're felons. Yeah, and no offense, maybe the, the cabbies out there, but maybe driving a cab, driving a... Right, know, yeah. Professional driver, maybe, maybe. Yeah, there's, it just limits what you can do. Oh, yeah. And this country is supposed to be, be all about doing whatever you want, land of the free, home of the brave, land of opportunity. But what they don't say is, oh, but if you fuck up, yeah, that kind of goes out the your window. Your opportunity, yeah, doesn't yeah, exist Yeah, your land of opportunity just got a whole lot smaller. All right. That's it's that's the Morgan Island. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the fact of it. You know, more like you have like one little city block. That's your land of opportunity. Whatever you can make up there. <laughs> you know, it's fucking even places where McDonald's could they won't even fucking hire felons. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, hey, you know, you know how I feel about. It. We've talked about this many times. Yeah. Yeah. I wish there would be some kind of reform and something out there to kind of change the way that things are and the way legislation exists, but I, unfortunately at the, at the moment just just isn't. Yeah. You know. Uh but you know what? Guys like us with a little, little bit of a platform, I guess you could say, on our little soapbox. Yeah, getting, getting we, to we it. We can talk about it. Right, we, yeah. We have the ability to talk about it, reach out to some people. Yeah, that brings up like a good point. Start you know? some dialogue. Yeah, yeah and you know? we're doing our own, our own thing. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I mean, somebody might not want me working for them, but fuck it, I'm going to do my own thing then. I'll have people working for me. You know what I mean? Forget, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll, if, you, if you get kicked out of the park, go build your own. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to just do what I want to do. I'm going to build my own thing. I'm going to do my own thing, succeed or fail on my own merit. Exactly. Entrepreneur. Um, you know, I, don't, I hate being a slave to anybody else's decision making. You know, being having yeah. anybody else. Because, look, drugs controlled my life for so long that to finally be clean and then to give that control over to, like, another human entity, it's like, like I'm just switching the shackles from one thing to another, you know? Yeah. Why would I want to do that? Either way, you're a slave to something. So I say screw Always that. Always gonna be. Uh, but you know, I I do feel happy at least for in your situation personally. Mm -hmm. You still have a really good job. You want you're one of the lucky few. That yeah, exactly. Still able yeah, to the, come out yeah. of this and have a the yeah, job come intact. Out, yeah, my job was intact. The company that I work for, like we mentioned before, they do they 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 know about my shit, and they're one of those people that they're okay with you know giving second chances and 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 yeah. not being as uh, judgmental as a lot of other people are but most people aren't so lucky we know that i mean it goes without saying tons aren't. most people aren't so lucky and they're going to struggle for the rest of their life yeah and not that you're not going to struggle either or have some struggles because of it yeah absolutely but, yeah if this job you know, goes south then what the then what the fuck am i going to do exactly you know so yeah, it's like good, it's, good it's it's always something that you have to keep in the back of your mind yes, and you do. it's just unfortunate so with that article you think about you know young guys who you know 
got into some trouble when they were teen, whatever, got marked, and they're trying to get their life better. They're trying to go to college and do the right thing, and they can't get in because they got in trouble back in the day. And it's a seri- it's a real bummer, you know, and they wonder why there's so much crime and shit on the streets because they, these people, that's just, what the fuck else are they going to do? Yeah, I'm really pro-education, obviously. And anyone who wants to educate themselves, anyone who wants to make themselves better, go through rehabilitation, I mean, they should be allowed to. And, and, you yeah, know, it should be an option. In some, sh- in some shape or form, should be able to be allowed to get educated. Yeah, it's, that's, yeah, it's one of the best things available. And, you know, government always preaches, you know, how important education is to them, too. So many politicians run their platforms on education, education, this, that. And by the way, the entire education system is fucked up beyond belief anyway, but they pick and choose who is able to get it and who's not, you know? Yeah, and, and this kind of... Talk about hypocrisy. We all know uh, most politicians are kind of career criminals anyway, and it just in like a different way. Yeah, they have, yeah, they have like a license to steal, basically, is how yeah. that works. Um, just because they're kind of uh, they wear suits when they uh, <laughs> yeah, when they steal yeah. Money. Which, by the way, I'm so glad that those fucking that the elections are over because like October was brutal, you know, with all the stupid campaign ads, like the you know the slandering ads. And they're just like the, it's so ridiculous. The things that these people come up with to to bash other 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 opponents are so corny. Some of them pathetic. That like, and they were on all the time, all the time. I could not wait for the elections to be over so I didn't have to watch that garbage anymore. Well, I saw this video again. I hate to keep referencing Facebook, but I saw it on somebody's Facebook. Love Facebook, don't you? Yeah, it's kind of like a spoof uh, video about political ads. In campaign videos, classic it's called a uh, Gil Fulbright like political truth ad or some bullshit. I don't know. I think we're. Can you try to find that on YouTube? We can maybe play the clip. Yeah, I'll, it's, I'll play it. I now. think it'll still work on audio. If we even just hearing the audio, I think it's kind of funny. Hi, I'm Gil Fulbright. The people who run my campaign, they've made this commercial, and I'm in it. This campaign, it's not about me. It's about crafting a version of me that'll appeal to you. A version that visits random work sites with paid actors pointing at things. A version of me that doesn't find old people loathsome or pointless. Has a conventionally attractive yet curiously still family. Listening to my constituents, legislating, these are things I don't do. What I do is spend about 70% of my time raising funds for re-election. I'd do anything to stay in office. My name's Gil Fulbright, but hell, I'll change my name to Phil Goldbright or Bill Fulbright or... Fill up my mouth with farts. These are the things that are important to me. And these are the fine people that finance my campaign. Now, in order to do these things, I have to stay in office. And to stay in office, I have to keep these guys happy. Now, if any of these things make these guys unhappy, well, my hands are tied. So come November, the choice is clear. Do you want another spineless mouthpiece for special interest in lobbyists? Or a spineless mouthpiece for special interest in lobbyists? I'm Philip Amoth with Farts, and I approve this message. That was fucking funny. Yeah, he just, yeah, that was, that was really funny. He just summed it up completely perfectly. It's like, uh, vote for me if you want someone who just lies through their fucking teeth. Yeah. I have no faith in politics. I think I've said that time and time again here. Yeah. No, whenever I, we do actually talk I, about it. Yeah, me neither. Because no matter who I vote for, I see the exact same bullshit happen Every year, so it's like, God, what the fucking point? I mean, I can't vote it's now like anyway. It doesn't so matter who who's in the in office. Like, it, it, why should you care? Yeah. So there was uh, that South Park episode. Who uh, I think they, what they compared voting to like the candidates between a douche and a turd sandwich. I think. <laughs> yeah. So they summed it up fucking perfectly. Where it's like, what's the point when your choices are a douche and a turd sandwich? And that's exactly what it's like. So you see both of these idiots, and you're like, okay, I could either pick asshole A or asshole B. What's the fucking point? Yeah, and as long as you don't have any other options aside from the two-party system, then you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. fuck it. Just don't care. Uh, well, I was also online today. I do have a lot of time now since I'm in between jobs and trying to figure things out at, <laughs> at my job, actually. Um, I saw this other funny article about this guy who's obsessed with taking nude photos of older women. Old women? Of old women. How old? We're talking old. We're talking saggy tits like grandmas, dude. Yeah, when the grandmas let this perf take new pictures of them? Yeah. Was it for like porn or very, for like very art? Very open-minded grandmas. It's like art uh, shit? It's for, it's, it's, it's done in the kind of an 
artistic style and taste. I don't think he's the first guy to do shit like that, though. I feel like I've seen, like, other... Probably not. Plus, dude, I wait, I'm sure it's all been done at this point, you know? Yeah. You're not really breaking lot, new ground. A lot of dudes out there with a granny fetish, so that's not, even, that's not surprising at all. No. It still grows, not my thing. I was watching a show, like, a news segment about a guy who was fucking, like, uh, old women in nursing homes. What, and he was like, into it was, like, him? It was, like, a problem. Yeah, he was, like, going around in a nursing home and trying to fuck old women. Ew. That's just a sick... Yeah, you're just sick. But you know what? There's a fetish out there for everything. There's a guy I used to work with. He, like... He would always have... Like, in his locker, it was, like, a construction place. He had, like, a locker. We all had lockers. We would change. <laughs> he would always have, like, fucking granny porn. Like, really? like hardcore. Like, disgusting. Like, foul. We're talking, like, like 70s... Deep, we're talking, like, DP fucking grandma yeah, porn? Yeah, no? like... Yeah, like, gangbang grandma porn. It was absolutely what disgusting. And all the guys would be like, yo, what the fuck, man? But he was, like, totally... Wasn't even shy about it. He was, like, completely open. He's like, yeah, oh, I like it. He was, like, so the Spanish guy. it was a guy. magazine? Yeah, it was a magazine. He was, like, really old school. Do you remember the title of it? No. But I'm oh, sure it was shit. something disgusting, like, uh, Granny Banger 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> something gross. Yeah, that's fucking... That's, that's fucked up shit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see how I can get turned on by it. Although, I was surprised that... A number of the bodies that I saw weren't half bad. Oh, so you're into the granny porn, you're admitting? Well, I'm just saying, considering that they, they are very old women. I have seen some seriously hot old women, but I mean, like, not like that. That's just, I, saggy, wrinkly. Yeah. I guess I'm, what I'm really saying is, if I ever get married, and I lived in my 80s, and my wife ended up looking like that, but you know what, that's not so bad. You'd still bang her? Yeah, I would definitely bang her. Yeah. Some of them were definitely banging. Yeah, with like still. six pills of Viagra, you might be able to do. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. Do you think? I don't even know if all people even still bang. I feel like once you reach a certain age, like you just should stop banging. But I'm sure they do. I think, even though it's gross. I think a lot do. So they're just like attracted to. Because no, I'm not attracted to older women, but when you get to that age, you just settle. You're just I, like, fuck it. This is the best well, I can get, so I'm cool with it. Well, yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> right. I think at that age, it's just about getting the job done. Yeah, because there's no way you can look at that wrinkly old form and be like, yeah. this is aesthetically you know, pleasing Obviously, if, to If you me. still got your wife, you're going to fuck your wife, right? Yeah. But say you're single, your wife died. I you're mean, not going to go after I, I'd pay for a younger chick, obviously. If I had yeah. a choice, I'd pay for a younger chick to fuck me. Well, we know you would. You'd pay for a chick right now. I would. <laughs> I mean, but when it, you know, if I was committed and in a long marriage... Of course, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. You know, I I wouldn't go. Yeah, then it's all about against love. my wife. Yeah, you might as well. Then just bang your old wife, and I'd, she bangs bang your old, old husband. Disgusting wife. Well, yeah, because to her, you're an old disgusting husband. Exactly. So yeah. fuck it. Yep. Two peas in a pod. Beautiful thing. It or is an a ugly thing. thing. Or yeah, I guess it depends. But you know, like if a guy's doing it, like as an art, um, you know, expression piece, you know, that shit can get really weird. Remember, there was that guy. I forget his name. He used to, you know, he tw- he, he was a guy who put like the upside down crucifix in like a jar of piss. And he would take pictures of, like, shit. Can't think of it. And, like, shit on people's body. And it was, like, all, all just uh, for art, you know? And they got a lot of controversy, and people were trying to censor him and like shit. like, performance art? Yeah, so, yeah, performance art. And he, and he would do... He was a photographer, too. So he would have, like, gallery oh. shows, exhibitions in, in New York City. And so I used to be really big into, like, the gallery show circuit. I used to do paintings and shit for galleries in New York. And so some of the, some of the exhibits that I've seen have been, like, really disgusting and risque. I'm talking, like you know like stuff like that and actually I had seen some of this guy's exhibit that's the first time I saw him and he had like all these big massive like 18 by 24 photos of women covered in piss and shit <laughs> and like very sacrilegious like cr- you know, crucifixes that's and cool. piss I mean, it's interesting I mean he, he got he was super successful super famous but of course there was you know the you got me thinking about G.G. Allen the punk <laughs> yeah, guy yeah, G- yeah he was yeah he was yeah he was he blended performance art and like rock and, and music because he would do just crazy, crazy shit yeah, on stage. Yeah, naked, f- like fuck chicks or rape chicks on stage. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a shit on stage. I think throw his shit. Yeah, he would throw he shit in the stuff. audience. Yeah, didn't he kill himself on stage? Uh, I, I, no, I don't know. I can't say. I would be lying if I said I knew for sure. It was drugs or something? I know he had a not very good demise. I don't know for sure, but he was, but he was awesome. I love his music. Um, so yeah, I guess there's like a. I'm not. You know, I'm like an artist myself, and I play music, I paint, I draw, and shit. You know, and I like doing kind of controversial stuff, but to go to that level, it's not really my style. But I do appreciate like the people who do do it. I think art should be something with no boundaries and no censorship, and and yeah. you should be allowed no, to I, I totally agree express that. whatever you want, as crazy as it may seem to some people. You know what I mean? It's art to somebody else, so fuck it. Yeah, you should always whatever you want to express yourself, have everyone not have to think about a boundary mm. to adhere to. Right, yeah. I like things that make noise, you know. So if you do something that makes noise and that kind of gets people talking, I think that's like the really end goal Yeah. about not? it, you know. 
Um, I love stuff. I love stuff like that. Yeah. So I was um. I was on Tinder last night. Uh oh. And uh, I actually just finished jerking off. <laughs> Thanks for that info. Um. But I and I got this message from a chick. I never get message first. Oh, so she messaged you? She actually messaged me and. Believe it or not, she was good looking. Well, how does that work though? The tinder, like that, like the Tinder one. That's it's the one where like right you have to swipe it. Like you think that they're good looking, yeah. and if they swipe that you're good looking, then you get matched. Then you get matched if you're like in proximity to each other or something, right? Uh, yes. Okay, so she texted. So what did she say? <clears throat> uh, actually, you know what? Let me pull out my phone. You know, this is great. That being a uh, was she hot? She, you she got a picture was, of her? I'm, I'm gonna pull it right now. All right, my phone. We'll pull it. What out? Uh, this chick's message. <laughs> so I can read exactly what she wrote me. Is your reply? I did. Sweet. Uh, Do you have a friend? Tinder? I don't know because she's. So are you of, just on every social dating site that I exists? Am. I got banned from two. You recently. got banned from two social dating sites? Oh, she fucking deleted me, that bitch. Wow, what did you say to her? See what she what, you me. freaked her out? No, I didn't. Uh, but she you said something her like, picture of your dick hey, do you want to get drunk with me and make bad decisions? Is what oh, she said. Oh, my kind and of I woman. Said, yeah, well, of course I'm always down for that. Uh, <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> yeah, are you? Do you live in the city? Yeah. And after that, she was like, "Oh, is everyone this boring on Tinder?" What? And I was like, "What does she want you to say?" Exactly. I and think that, she wanted you to talk dirty to her. And it kind of goes back to what I said before, like four podcasts ago. Like, I I've noticed that a lot of women they want to be like wowed within the first sentence. It's kind of hard to wow somebody via text. It is. It's hard to wow someone in the first fucking sentence. Wow, I guess you got to be a little more creative. What could I you have said? In re- what would you have said in retrospect? You should have just sent her a picture of your thing. dick and just be like, "What? What now?" Yeah, probably should have. Talk about a statement. Hey, if that's forget, what she wanted, if she wanted me to jump words, right into it. Just jump right in. Balls deep, and uh, yeah, that's what I should have done. But in retrospect, I should, I did the right thing. Oh, well, how many how many girls do you meet on Tinder? How many girls have you met from Tinder? Now, some never, people say it's good. Some people say it sucks. I never actually hung out with a girl from Tinder. Oh, I've so talked it's to a number of girls nice. from Tinder, but I never actually hung out with a girl from Tinder. I've hung out with chicks from Plenty of Fish, huh. but never from Tinder. How many guys have you met from Grindr? Uh, actually, I've hung out with about <laughs> eight dudes from Grindr. Sweet. So Grindr works pretty well. Wait, I heard. For, yeah, I literally, no, I really did. For gay dudes, I heard Grindr was like Is the it? was like great. Like they, they, it's like you can meet tons of gay dudes. But Tinder, I've heard. Is like not so good. A lot of people are not having any success with that shit. I've never, like I said, keep repeating myself, but I, I never hung out with a girl from Tinder. Wow. Never. I've had a lot of conversations, but yeah, that's but about all it. All that went nowhere. What a waste of fucking time. Well, I mean, you got to think like, you figure the majority of dudes are swiping right on every chick. Yeah, because they just yeah, they just don't care. They just want to get laid. The so amount of options that these chicks have with other dudes are men. endless. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So where you're like being a little bit more, where they're being a little more picky with who they yeah, swipe, cause they're they can getting be. yeah, because they can be guys are just swiping yes, 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 yep. yes, hoping that anyone texts they them. They have endless options. A chicken like everyone knows this already. A chicken get laid whenever she wants. I don't care how ugly or not you are. That's true. You can get laid whenever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. For us guys, uh, it's a little tougher. Some a little guys. bit tougher. Some of those guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's cool. I've yeah. never thought that I've I've never been on any kind of dating site. I don't think I've never done it. I've tried. You know. You never had to, Mister F- Fucking Like. You know what? But I think I might try. Chicks. I think I might try now. I'm not with my girlfriend anymore. I think I might jump into the online dating scene. I suggest it. So what, women, you, if you would if do you, well if you see my profile out there. Give me a shout. Yeah, what do you think your name's gonna be? Do you have a name in your head right now that you want to use? Uh, something really pervy, like horsecock eighty five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ho- yeah, horsecock, h- hairy balls eighty five. Yeah, you think that would work? I'll ruin your cervix thirty six. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> that'd be a good one. That might, you know what? That actually might be good for some websites. That'd be good because there's the ones where you just like where they claim like. I've, I go online, you know, like I'm watching like a, like a movie or whatever, and you go on these like streaming sites where they have all these fucking pop-ups, and there's all these ones where it says like, like super hot chicks, down to fuck anybody, no credit card required, like like all all these yeah. things where they're just claiming that like it's, there's no strings attached, oh, casual sex, bullshit. like I think a lot I of them are trying to bait yeah, you. a lot of them are bullshit, and I think a lot of the women that like respond on these sites are like there's just bots, bots. Yeah, yeah, it's bullshit, right, yeah, I think you told me something about that. But there's got to be some sites that exist that, like... Because when I was dating Ashley, I, I never shared this story, but I was on Ashley Madison. 
Oh, that's the one for uh, co- uh, for cougars, wives, right? Cougars and wives. Oh, okay. I might wives looking to cheat discreetly. Mm, I like and, that. And there's a ton of bots on there. I mean, there was a few legit really? chicks I talked so to. So it was bullshit? It wasn't even a legit yeah, site? Yeah, I actually paid to be on there because I was so bored with Ashley. And I, I really liked... I should have known then that I just shouldn't have been in that relationship. Mm, yeah, if you if you have to resort to going on AshleyMadison.com in your relationship, chances are it's not working out. Yeah, I, I for whatever reason I was really intent on trying to make it work out with me and Ashley, but uh, that was the wrong decision. So you said, "Fuck it, let me try and let get." Let me a try going Ashley Madison. So, so you know, in the meantime, and I you didn't kinda, get no hot wives te- messages. I had two opportunities where I could have, but. Um, I know they were in Jersey. It was, it was a bit of a drive. Ah, Jersey. Eesh. So I didn't jump <laughs> on it. <laughs> but in retrospect, too, I mean, the, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of bots. But it, it's like, what, what was I thinking? You know, I mean, why didn't I just break up with Ashley? It wasn't working out, obviously. Yeah, that's true. Why Why? Why did I just break up with her? Yeah. Well, you did eventually. Send him on like, this, this is fucking bullshit pace site, Ashley Madison. Trying to get away discreetly. Yeah, I think yeah. Some of them are just, yeah, they're just a rip off. Like, they just take your fucking money and you're not. You're like, I don't know what the statistics are. People who actually get laid from these websites, but I can't imagine they're very high. Yeah, I don't think it's very good. You got a way better chance just going out to a bar and finding some drunk chick yeah, and I, hanging I out and getting a connection, doing your thing. That's how I've always done it. I go. I'm old school when it comes to that shit. Yeah. Supermarkets, bookstores, clubs, bars. You know, I I'm just, I got no game, man. I, I can't go. Like, well, I'm not, yeah, I'm not we, very good. We, in the we just bar. watched some mystery clips. Now you can <laughs> now you can implement some of his strategies next time you go out. I'm not good in the bar and go up to like a strange chick that I don't know. I'm not good at that. Well, you never it's you're not, not really like happen. a bar kind of guy. No, like, I'm not. You never like I've been like yo, let's go to a bar, but like if the place is too crowded, you don't even want to go. It makes me uncomfortable. I have a lot of anxiety. Yeah, Fucking but I want to go because more crowded means more chicks. But you're not even into. But like you yeah, just don't. But then I get stressed out. Ah, uh, I like, see. I get very anxious. You gotta just go for it. Yeah. Well, now my my new medicine, I think I'm going to up my dosage. So I think I might be able to handle it better now. Yeah, I can be a little more laid back, a little yeah. more chill. Well, we should do that. We should start going out a little bit more and fucking having some fun. Yeah, I would love that, man. Fuck yeah. Do you know what kind of coffee you use? What kind of random question is that? I don't know. Just look at the coffee mug that I was drinking out of. Starbucks. That, Star- oh, is that, Starbucks? That, yeah, that's, um, like, that's like medium bl- roast. St- Starbucks blonde. That's the blonde that's roast. Blonde. And I but the key... It's French vanilla creamer. That's what I put in it. Ah, that's good that's stuff. That's the secret. I like that. So basically, any coffee you have, you put French vanilla creamer, and it's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, and okay, we're we're talking we're talking about coffee now. This podcast clearly right. needs to end. Fuck it. Okay. Um. What do we got going on for next week? Do we have anybody coming on the show? Going on? Could we've been planning. Well, we're, we're having a couple yeah, bands been... we might have lined up. Come on, we want to say anybody yet because no. we don't want to spoil it in case. They don't come or they do come, but we're trying to set some shit up to have some more interviews and some more yeah. interesting people come on the show. Um, so maybe for next week, the week after, I don't know. So we'll figure it out. Yeah, booking has kind of been a little bit of an issue and getting on the same schedule, but... Yeah, but we're going to work out something for some you. Work and, out. Yeah, get some cool interviews and shit for you. Um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on with the site. If you haven't heard about the Grind Factor Street team yet, check that out. If you want to be a part of it, let us know. I urge you all to be a part of it. I yeah. think we're going to order some new stickers. Yeah, we're getting a bunch of stickers. Logo. If you want to join the street team, we'll send you free stickers, free promotional stuff. Um, you know, you'll get some other perks on the website. I got some, we got some threads up right now. You can check. We have an announcement. Uh, so look into that. See if you're down. We got a bunch of cool new shit we're implementing on the site that you guys are going to be, you know, really Who do we have on really the street team for. thus far? Left Wing? Is he on it? Oh, uh, well, yeah. All the staff, like all the, all the, all the Grind Factor staff. Oh, they're all on Bunge, it? Um, reckless. So we got a, we got a few people who are who are getting into it. Oh, okay. So, but it's pretty new. So we're kind of still kind of feeling it out as we go. So we have that. We have a couple other cool things we're trying to implement. So you'll see big things in the future for Grind Factor. So if you want to be a part of it, yeah, it would be really and cool. I really think you guys are really gonna like this new site update once it, once it's finished. Yeah, yeah. It's we're really gonna look good. Yeah, within the next like week or so, we're gonna be upgrading the site, updating some pages, and got some cool shit up up in the. Uh, in the front so with that we're going to end the show um as usual get at us on grind factor if you want to talk and we will catch you next week till next time stay classy grind factor later